I want to uh, welcome each of you here today for this uh, momentous occasion here. We finished this uh, Omni Village Roundhouse, very important uh, structure to this village, this community. We'll hear more about that uh, from our speakers. Those of you that don't know me, I'm Bruce Cass, I'm the Director of Tribal Development for the Osage Nation. We've had the, the privilege and honor to be a part of this project. Morning feeling to be standing here today and see the result of those efforts and the efforts of a lot of others to get to this point with this project. I want to take the opportunity to, to recognize the uh, contractor uh, that constructed this facility as uh, Builders Unlimited Incorporated out of uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma. We have some representatives here uh, Bruce Wright and Steve Waterdown. You guys can stand up so these folks can see you. They sit way in the back. These gentlemen helped us out here to get this project completed. And then also our architect uh, uh, with Fritz Bailey Architects out of Tulsa is uh, Mr. Whit Todd. He, he was an instrumental in ensuring that we met the historic preservation requirements of this structure and uh, handled all of the uh, professional services required to get this project designed and constructed. So Whit, if you'd stand up, we'd recognize you as well. As we uh, always do with the events like this, we want to uh, start with prayer. Uh, we've asked the uh, Hominy Head Committeeman, Mr. Steve Pratt, Dr. Steve Pratt, to uh, open us up with prayer here. Oh, Takomra. He does the Wakanda, Wakanda, he's in here. Now we're not Kalale. I'm father, Jaja, we brought it here. In that, I'm father, Bali, when I'm in here, one is a lead designer, where we know. In that, I'm a lead designer, where we know. In that, I'm a lead designer, where we know. In that, I'm a lead designer, where we know. In that, I'm a lead designer, where we know. In that, I'm a lead designer, where we know. In that, I'm a lead designer, where we know. In that, I'm a lead designer, where we know. In that, I'm a lead designer, where we know. In that, I'm a lead designer, where we know. Heavenly Father, again, we just ask you to look down upon us as we have gathered for this momentous celebration that you have provided a way of life for us. We're able to come together and through our vision of our leaders and of our people here today, Father, we're going to start another uh, 100 years or so for us to have our ways and for us to move forward in, the, in this path of life that you brought to us. So, Father, we ask you to look down upon all those who are gathered here today. I ask you to take each and every one, all the families represented, and I ask you to take the vision, and, uh, and uh, thank you for that division of our leaders that they have gathered here today, and they want something good for our people. Something good is going to come from what, what they have been uh, put in front of us and what they have embarked upon. So, again, I ask a special blessing today, Father, for our, our, our uh, Kaike, and our, our Kaike, uh, the Wonka, and also our Congress, and all those who have uh, had a hand in this, with this Zitop. Uh, so, Father, again, we did come before you in celebration and thanks and praise. And all these things we ask in thy Son's name, our Lord and Savior Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Steve. At this time, we'll hear from uh, uh, Principal Chief Jeffrey Standing Bear. Thank you, Bruce. And uh, after I finish, uh, we're going to ask uh, Dr. Pratt to uh, come here again and say something. And speaker, ask you. Uh, I want to uh, first of all um, recognize our elders, your elders, and mine who uh, came to this country from our villages near what's now Neosho what is now Coffeyville, what is now St. Paul, Kansas, and especially from what uh, is now Claremore, Oklahoma. And they come from different directions, and they come to this country, and we, we had uh, a hard time, as our families will, will tell you. Uh, we had uh, a lot of uh, grief that comes with loss of family in a hard way. But they kept our traditions as best they could in those times 
and then they they all decided we're going to get what we can and we're going to take care of each other with it and then we came to this as you all know to this Ilaska when we brought this in and I, I want to recognize their foresight in uh, creating these roundhouses and then I want to congratulate uh, the people of this Sonsoli Tawa who uh, maintained longer than the other districts uh, this roundhouse. And when we saw that this roundhouse here was about to go the way of the roundhouses of Pahuska and Great Horse, we said, well, this is a good place to start to, to, to halt uh, this, this, this loss of our, of our symbols of our way of life. So we came in and we asked Bruce and his team to uh, do some emergency repairs because it was winter time and the snow was uh, pushing it down. It, looked, it was close to fall, falling. It was close to that time, uh, happening. And they did that. And then we, uh, we asked uh, people how much would it cost to restore it. And uh, we uh, were able to get good information on that to take it apart and, and rebuild it using it as it is, using the wood, using the design exactly. And a lot of research went into it. And then we went to our Osage Congress where we need to go to, like our people have always done, we, we, we always go to our council in those days. And we presented it to them and, and they, uh, they appreciated it enough to take funds from all the places people want to use money and they took it out of there and they put it into this project and then Bruce and his team after they got that authority we worked in getting the architects and the engineers but we didn't do anything without talking to the village committee they call those five-man boards now and I was able to come to these uh, meetings and to, to hear the input of the com community here, not only for this roundhouse, but for the projects that are coming up here after uh, June. And it, it's very encouraging to see uh, the Hominy people here talking and thinking and discussing and, and, and getting to a point of progress where they all agree this is where we're going to go. And that's, that's really important to see. Because as, as Dr. Pratt and I were talking, and, and, I, and we, we know all of you understand this, it is a daily fight to maintain our language, our culture, our way of life. It's, it's a daily struggle, but we will, we will prevail because all of you are dedicated to this and many more. And when I look at our young people here and I see that there are so many young people coming up and challenging us to speak our language. We meet them at a grocery store and they'll, they'll be talking to you in Osage and they expect a response. So I go home and I'll look at Dr. Pratt and his mother's, you know, dictionary. I'll go to look at our uh, Quiznet um, app, and then uh, when one of my grandsons yesterday were at the house getting them ready for the June dances, like you're doing, um, we're talking Osage, a little bit of Osage here and there, and I'm just telling him what just little things like you know, you know, you know, I want to shake your hand and all those basic greetings that we, we do to show respect. And so in our home, like your home, we're trying, okay, but it's hard. It's hard when you have a television, the internet, an iPad, and, and everything else you can do. It's, it's hard to compete. So Dr. Pratt, he, he understands that uh, not only from an academic point of view, but from a cultural point of view. So I want to thank everybody 
that is, is taking part in this. And uh, it's been a big honor for me uh, at this time to be part of it. And it was uh, meant to be, as they say. You know, they'll, I heard an old man tell us that there's no such thing as coincidence, they say. And then down here in Harmony, I got, I got to say this, uh, uh, Mr. Jess Townsend told me one time, he said, uh, you know, our people, uh, you know, we, we talk to that sun. We talk to that sun four times a day. Sunrise, noon, sunset, midnight. So the gates of heaven are open at that time. But they always said our, our people, and we don't do this yet, but we're gonna, I think we're going to get back to that time some of you know that when that morning star comes up, we're already up there talking for about this day. We're already, when that sun comes up, we're talking about our condition as, as human. And we're asking that sun to talk to that creator for us. I saw that. I saw that. Um, I saw them do that. You, some of you saw that. When they would do that, they cry about it in the morning. They cry about it. I mean, absolutely. They're sincere. So I'm trying to learn that. It's, it's uh, we get in this spot, it's humbling. When you get in the spot that Dr. Pratt's in in the Elo show, I've never sat in that spot. Archie Mason over at Great Horse, he's in that spot. I'm sure he can tell you. That's humbling when you get in there. I don't ever want to be in those spots. That's too big for me. But I can tell you this, when it comes to where I am, just like they are, we can't do this alone. We gotta turn to Almighty God, and we gotta turn to each other. So, yeah, yeah, Leah Bashina, Thank you everyone for coming and joining us on this momentous day, a day of celebration. And we were trying to figure out how long this uh, roundhouse, this Sistapa, has been in existence. And uh, there were two, they said. We don't know. We just kind of have to go back upon what people have told us. But the second one, and then becoming, uh, Bruce was talking about it, heard in the, in the 1900s around then, uh, the teens, sometime that way. So it's been over 100 years that we've had this structure. So it's monumental that we're able to gather here today. We're making history. All of you who are here today is history because now it's changed. We have uh, media we're recording this. And so down and all of our grandchildren and great-grandchildren, they're going to look down upon. They're going to know that uh, this was a new era that started here. And it's, uh, it's something that we need to do. And we're talking about our ways. God blessed us. He, he, uh, he looked down upon our Osage people and he gave us this uh, way of life. And he gave us a way to put it together, to follow. We talk about this Ojanke, this road of life. And that's what we're trying to follow when it becomes difficult and hard for us to do this every day. But as we gather today, that's our task. So we have a, a new roundhouse, a new building. But for it to be, to, for it to be something, it requires people. It requires us, as Anzoli, as Wajaji. It requires us to be able to go in there and, and to maintain what our old folks did. We talked about this when we first gathered, when we broke ground over there. And that is that our roundhouse here used to be a, it's, it was the center of everything for us, for our people here. We gathered for every occasion, and no sages, you know, we like to come together. We came as families, and we came as our bands and our districts, and we all, you know, we, we marry outside of our district. That's the way that we get bigger, we get larger. And so we, we have contact, we have relatives in all of our districts. So that's the way that they, they set it up for us. And that's the way that we are today. And so they had these celebrations. And you know, we're, right now we talked about this a few days ago about this is a Osage New Year. You know, springtime for us is that it's a new year. We, we've been greeting each other that way. Those of us that go into our Kikonze and, and follow these ways, you know, we say Happy New Year because that's where it is for us. 
and the way that we see and they used to gather over there for they and they like they adopted all of our, our uh, uh, traditional western holidays you know, we'd have christmas over there they'd have ehe's god come and uh, santa claus and they'd have easter and they'd have all these that they just like to gather winter time whatever it was but also to the life cycle they gathered over there for us to you know to have we went to namings and we did uh, even brought mourners over and they would they would gather and they would mourn in there too and it was just a that round house over there and that mazan that was a place for us to be and so when they were there all of your grandparents and great grandparents all of your ancestors were over there that's where we come from and that's who we are as uh, Zongzoli and as Wajajin. But the task for us today is that for that to maintain, it's just not a place to go look at and drive by. It's a place to bring back to life. And that is what we need to do. We need to have that instilled within us as we, and the chief and I were talking about, you know, we need to keep this, this battle for our, our, our ways. Number one is respect. We, if you talk about shaking hands, we need to learn how to respect one another the way Washaja do. We need to learn that worldview about how we view time and how we view our relationship and our families and the way to go up to someone and to address them by that relationship. We need to we need to incorporate these daily into our lives. And that's how it goes. It goes for us. We're we're different than Western people. And that's what that roundhouse is. The structure of itself you know, is that we see is that there's no I say like a beginning or an end is that it's circular. And that's the way life is for us is that it goes that way for us and we we uh, we sit there and they used to sit on the ground and maybe you've seen this a long time ago old pictures where our people they used to have their feast they would sit on the ground they didn't sit at tables and if you would see that and one time we talked about that and said maybe we, we could do that again and sit down to where our old folks used to have these dinners somebody said we would but probably everybody would make fun of us because they haven't seen that so there's so much in our ways that people haven't seen and now we see them today in this challenge and they're saying well that's not what we saw or what we see social media is taking over and so it's up for us now to we say the uh, chief and our assistant chief and congress members they all gave us they, they gave us something wonderful today we have a wonderful structure over there that our parents grandparents and all of them well, i was there and we used to dance in there too and he launched when we was in there but now it's our task it's our place for us to be able to go over there and to gather and make it available. I'm not going to lock it up. We don't want it to be just a, a place that's put over there. And when we go in there, we're going to be able to do this, to make that movement, to go around. That's what we do in our Elon school, to go around the way that we do in our Keep Going there, Native American church, the way we do in our homes, and the way we follow that life cycle. That's made, that's made available to us. So that's what we need to do today is come together and recognize there's meaning to that. There's meaning to everything in there. To humble ourselves, to go sit on Mother Earth, to be able to get up and get down, and be able to move in there and to work and, and work with one another, to build a fire in there, and all these things that we want to do. So we gather here today, that's where we are, in a, a momentous celebration of a new way of life that we have had that we can go back to and that we can now gather once again and that uh, we can be thankful for this. For it didn't cost us ourselves nothing. All we have to do is go over there, but we have to maintain it. We have to just come and, and, uh, and be able to be a part of this. So today, I think it's our, our challenge for us as Zonzoli, those who are from the village, those who are here, is that our challenge is for us to be able to, to move it, to make it go, to have that movement once again in there and to be able to honor and to respect all of our ancestors and all of our elders that were here it was wonderful to see them in there they would be you know uh, some, some lot back then a lot of them didn't even wear uh, uh, western clothes they still wore leggings and they they wore those uh, scalp locks and they were different but they gathered and they were they were honest loving kind caring watch and that's the way that we want to be so that's again this kind of notion is that to be able to hopefully is that to explain further as we go and to teach we can teach in there. We can do anything we want in this in this structure, this seat top of, is that that's the thing that's been provided for us. So I encourage all of us, is that our five-man board, our <coughs> Congress, our everyone that has had a hand in this, our Kahike and our Kahiko, all of that, to help us to maintain this and help us to be able to have something now that was what our people left for us and to be able to have these way of life. So again, that's what, thank you all for being here today. Thank you all for being, providing this for us. Is that it's just a wonderful day of celebration as we begin 
over a new hundred years that this is going to be there. And that we're going to see is that to see what life holds for us. And now we have a place. We have a place that we can go and we can teach, we can we can sing, we can just live our lives as Wajaji and that's in Zots only. And that's the most important part that we have. So now I think they want to, uh, we're going to move forward and ask the speaker if she wants to uh, come up and just say a few words for us today. Uh, again, thank you. Kakona. Good afternoon. I've been asked to say a few words, and um, but this is a very humbling time for me right now because as a leader of our government and um, as the speaker, I'm used to speaking in many places, but not in front of this group, so my Zonzoli people, because I, I have a place down here and I know it, um, you know, our men handle things, and so we don't often speak. Um, so this is very humbling and I'm happy to see all the faces and the many families who are represented at this time. Um, I appreciate Chief's words and his initiative in moving forward and taking care of this roundhouse. And when we began, uh, many of our Congress members, you know, were from Hominy down here in Sanzoli and we spoke about the memories that we had of this roundhouse. and. Um, spoke about the people before us and so that there was there was discussion about what to do with it and there was even discussion to move it um, but I'm glad that we chose to keep it where it is um, and that we can move forward and, and have our children there and I think about see the faces and I think about Aunt Marguerite and Aunt Lucille and um, Uncle Leroy and you know just many of the families representative uh, represented here today and where we come from and you know my grandparents up the hill and so it's it's very moving when we come together like this because I think of all of them and um, I'm, I'm happy to see many of the people who advise me in my life my Uncle George is here and um, uh, Sunny and and um, my aunts Bell and and um, Dudley and I'm just happy to see all of you and thank you for being here for us and advising us and they, they continue to to teach us and get on to us when we need it and so I appreciate that and, and they're precious to us they're here to guide us into the future and give us a way to show our children and continue on so I'm happy that this uh, structure is is new and like Uncle Steve said um, you know, it's springtime, it's our new year. So it's very fitting that it's finished now. And we have a new building, but those grounds are the same and that's sacred to us. And those footsteps of all of our ancestors and um, those before us, our elders are there and you know, we can make new ones. And uh, when we gather here at Zonzoli, Uncle Steve talks to us a lot of times and I was just telling someone the other day that um, he gives all of our committee a, an opportunity to speak and to talk to one another when we gather because it's important and that's how the rest of us learn. And so while I have the chance, I would just like to say that I encourage the men of my generation because I don't, I don't often have that opportunity to speak up because, you know, as women are set back over here because that's our place. But while I have the opportunity to say so, it's very important that the men of my generation um, are listening and learning and getting ready to take over because our elders are precious and few and the time is coming that we're going to have to lead and, and move on into the future for many generations to come so I just encourage you know my generation to be prepared because we're losing our precious family members all of the time and so I just um, want to thank the Congress members for um, supporting this and funding to have this new structure and uh, I echo Uncle Steve's words of you know we need to gather and we need to come and be here and have have events and happy times together so I just um, thank you all for your attendance today and um, I look forward to many times together down here again thank you Speaker.
Pratt. And last on our agenda here, before we move outdoors to the new roundhouse for the ribbon cutting, we wanted to, uh, uh, those folks uh, down here in the village, as you all well know, were involved on a daily basis in uh, seeing this project move forward, and that's uh, the five-man board. And we want to hear from uh, Mr. Jeff Wilcox. I believe he's a vice chair. So we'll give you a little time here for Jeff. Chief, Chief, elders, family members, and friends, um, this is a historical occasion for all of us. Um, back when we got nominated for the new five man, there was talk that we could move the roundhouse. Some thought it would be best to tear down, but as the five man board, we decided to keep it. And I'm certainly glad that we did. Um, a lot of elders have been in there. Um, I believe Walter Maitland was the first drum keeper to use that. And that was back in the 1919. So he started a tradition, which I'm sure there was more to it before him, but that roundhouse has been here since I've been a young boy. And I'm glad to see it re restored. It's been restored, I believe, twice, three times. It's been moved once from in town to down here. Um, I'm just certainly glad that everybody appreciates it. And like we said, we have talked about it and we talked with the contractors, we talked with the uh, chief, um, and this, this was something that we needed to. Um, keep for our people. Um, I'd like to see more celebrations in there with uh, our drum keeper and his family. Um, it's certainly something that we need to use. Um, a lot of people that speak today used a lot of my words on keeping it going and I'm just certainly proud to be a part and on the five men part of the five man board we appreciate everybody and we listen to everybody and on these meetings and there was a lot of tears because nobody wanted it to be tore down and so everybody pretty much got what they wanted <coughs> to be restored as brand new we did try to use as much as we could um, but in, in all i think the contractors did a very good job um, if you haven't seen it it's certainly something to see, and we'll go from there. But I want to thank you all. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you, Jeff. Uh, so now we'll, uh, we'll uh, go out the double doors here, and we'll get ready for our ribbon cutting. Thank you all. <laughs> Oh, mm -hmm. 